welcome back to my channel. My name is Amanda, and today we are going to talk more about the CrossFit Open because it is getting so close. We are less than two weeks away, about a week and a half away from the CrossFit Open when you're seeing this video. Yeah, yeah, it's very, very soon. Uh, February 29th is when it starts, and one of the series I do here on my YouTube channel is uh, an open series. I put up my workouts, usually my full workout, with a voiceover giving you all some tips with my experience. I try to get that done as early as possible so you all can see it and hopefully learn a little bit from it. But I also like to do some predictions and I like to ask all of you for help with that because I'm not the only one who has ideas or knows what's going on. All of you have some really cool ideas about what could be coming for 24.1. So in the comments below, I am asking you all to help me with one of my next videos, which will be predictions for the 24.1 workout, as well as you can also throw in some overall predictions for the open. So put those below. I will be using them in a video. I will probably use some of your usernames. If you don't want your username and just your idea to be used, let me know and I'll just use your idea. I'm not gonna use them all, depending on how many I get. If I get like two, then yeah, I'll use them all. But uh, it, depending on how many I get, I probably won't use them all. I will try to respond to all of your comments and I will try to utilize at least the themes of them in the next video. So. I'll give you my predictions, I'll talk about some of your predictions, put those below, and we will talk about those in a future video coming up in the next week. So look out for that. If you're not subscribed, make sure you subscribe below. Like more than half the people who watch this channel aren't subscribed. So if you aren't, please hit that button. It helps with the algorithm, it helps me. So uh, if you can, do that below. I appreciate it. Now let's get into some news from the week. And one of the biggest things, I guess, is that Mal O'Brien will not be competing again this year. That being said, I won't be competing in the 2024 season. I truly feel like it's not what I need in my life right now. I'm focused on other areas and more important things in my life than competing. For one, I wasn't really surprised. And I feel like a lot of people felt similarly that they sort of thought that she wasn't going to come back, at least not this soon. She may still come back. She said that in her video. There's still a possibility. She still CrossFits. She still loves the methodology, but she's not competing anymore. So for the time being, at least. But when I've seen this in the past, when she first came out and said she wasn't competing, it was the same year that Haley Adams wasn't competing. And I had this feeling that we would see Haley Adams again this year. And if you happen to miss that, Haley Adams is competing again this year with the goal of making it to the CrossFit Games or having fun and trying to make it back to the CrossFit Games. So Haley Adams will be back. I had a feeling she would be back, but Mal, I just had this feeling that we weren't gonna see her back at least anytime soon. And uh, that looks like it is what is happening for now. And it's definitely a loss. Mal is extremely talented, but she doesn't have to do anything she doesn't wanna do. None of us do. So. I totally respect her decision not to compete, to live her life in Hawaii, it looks like now, and just have a good time. She's so young. She has plenty of time to make a comeback if she wants to, and she's still working with her sponsors and things, so who knows what the future holds for her, and uh, I'm just happy to see her putting herself first, which I think is a good lesson for most people. Second piece of news I saw in the last couple days we thought was interesting, Noah Olsen is going team. That is not exactly news, but he came out with who his team is with, and I think it's a pretty strong team. So it is out of his gym, Peak 360 in Miami, and the team consists of Matilda Garns, who was an individual athlete at one point, Lena Richter, who has been on that uh, CrossFit Oslo Navy Blue team for a long time and has had a ton of success there, stood on the podium there. That is a great get for that team. And Noah Olsen has also stood on the podium as an individual. This team is looking pretty good. And the final member of the team is Tolo Morikino, which I probably am mispronouncing. I know there was like a whole thing that we were all mispronouncing his name, like even the announcers. So Tola, we'll just call him Tola. Tola also has a ton of 
some individual experience, a ton of team experience. So I am excited to see this team. I think this team definitely has a chance at doing really well at the games. So that's a bit of news that I think is pretty interesting and something to keep our eyes on throughout the rest of the season. Dave Castro was also on the Savan podcast talking about some things and he made it pretty clear that he is going to be part of the open announcements this year. It's looking like I'll do one for sure. The first one. Oh, that'd be awesome. Yeah. And I am, for one, so excited about this. I remember like my first open, which was 2015, and like watching Dave Castro come out and you know, all of the <laughs> theatrics he does when he announced a workout. And it's just a lot of fun to see. And he does a really good job with it. I think he's very entertaining. It's funny. It's supposed to be funny. It's an act like he admits to it. And that's, that's what it is. And it's so fun to watch. And I am excited to see what he has to say and how he's going to present again this year. If there's going to be a whiteboard with some kind of crazy thing written on it. So very, very excited to see that he will be at the 24.1 announcement. And, um, that might tell us a little bit about where that announcement might be too. I don't feel like they've announced that yet. Dave also talked about on his channel a little bit about some scheduling changes happening with the games. Not entirely sure what he was getting at with that or like what that might mean or what we might see. Little twists with the schedule and with the, uh, the games and uh, something cool that we've never done before that I'm kind of excited about but not ready to talk about. But I did think it was interesting just giving us an idea of how heavy of a hand Dave is going to have in the programming and in the games this year. And it sounds to me heavy. I'm super fired up right now about programming and planning and setting up the games. I started planning with the schedule a few weeks ago and that creative juice and flow started flowing. And uh, I'm, I'm excited. Like he's going to be a part of this and I'm, for one, so glad he's back. I know I've said that in other videos before, but Dave is a really, really good advocate and face of CrossFit and firing him, I still think was like really surprising. And um, I'm just glad he's back. Let's go CrossFit. Let's, let's see CrossFit and continue to improve and go into its next era. And I think having Dave be a part of that is the way to go. And Adrian Bosman too. I really like Adrian as well. They are both awesome people. And lastly for this video today, I want to actually push you towards a different video. And that is a get with the programming live stream that was done about Tia and Laura and who is going to win next year. It was very, very good. If you haven't seen it yet, it's very interesting. They go through all the events, who won which events, by what percentage. It's worth a watch. It's fun. It is long, uh, but you can put it on, you know, 1.25 or 1.5 speed, get through it a little bit faster. It is definitely interesting and a cool way to sort of get yourself psyched up for what we could possibly see in Madison this year. I will say after watching it and even before watching it, if you ask me, my money is still on Tia Claire to me. I just don't know how you, how you pick anyone else. She's the goat essentially, or literally she is the goat. She is the best we've ever seen in this sport. I know that she competed against Laura at Rogue and didn't win. She was, literally just months post baby and she's still podiumed that's insane so yeah she didn't beat laura there there were some programming changes yeah i am i am not counting tia out and tia has just shown us time and time again she knows how to compete she's got a winner's mindset now i think that's something she really worked on it's not something we saw from her in her first two years at the games so that work that she's done to get there, that's carrying into her recovery from having a child. Because in a way, having a child is almost like an injury. You have to recover from that. You have to rehab that. And I just imagine that she's 
I mean, she looked still pretty good at Rogue. She could have won Rogue too. So with more months now to get better, to heal from her pregnancy and to ramp up her training again, I just, I can't pick anyone other than Tia. I just have that confidence in her. And they talked about this a little bit in the podcast, but Laura still has that weakness of handstand push-ups. It's not as bad. I'm sure she's working on it all the time. But the truth is, that's gonna be a really poor finish for her. And when we look at this Tia versus Laura thing, we're just looking at the two against each other. When that event comes up, there's going to be so many women in between the two in the scores, likely, depending on what the handstand push-up event looks like, depending on if there is one. But they're just, in the past, Tia generally has smaller holes, in my opinion, than Laura. So while Laura can certainly beat Tia in some workouts, it also comes down to how many people are getting in between Tia and Laura. And I think when it comes to weaknesses and strengths, you're going to see when Tia's behind Laura, there tends to be less people in between the two. And when Tia's ahead of Laura in certain events, there's more people in between Tia and Laura. And that's what I think will make the difference. It's those, it's not just the two against each other, but it's all the people that can sneak in between the two when one of the two needs those extra points. So we will see, I think it is going to be an incredibly exciting season between, like as long as Laura and Tia both make it there, like barring any injuries or anything crazy happening, the games in Texas are going to be awesome to watch those two battle this year because Laura's coming in as the reigning fittest on earth and Tia is coming in as someone who had the title for the longest and sat out last year. She hasn't been beaten by Laura in this arena. She hasn't been beaten by Laura at the CrossFit Games. It's never happened and I still think it's not going to happen. We'll see. You can also let me know in the comments if you think Tia or Laura is going to win the games this year. We'll talk about that more, I'm sure, as we get closer. But that podcast by Get With The Programming is really interesting. So you might want to go check that out after you check out this video and after you've subscribed, if you haven't done that yet. Like the video, leave a comment. I appreciate all of it and I appreciate all the support I've gotten from you as I've come back to YouTube. And I can't wait to continue to grow this community and to put out some cool content for all of you. So I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Oh, Carson, Carson, come on, let's go. You gotta make your appearance, buddy. I know we're stretching, we're waking up, we're waking up. But the people, the people wanna see you. Gotta give the people what they want. Say hi, buddy. He was taking a nap. So he's just waking up, buddy. Good morning, can you say hi to people? Hello. Okay, bye-bye, <laughs> see you later.